a survivor. I am a survivor. I'm going to preach this for you tonight. Subtopic. A real conqueror. Romans 8, 28 through 30. 28 to 39. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he may be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, then he, uh, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Somebody say, thank God I'm justified. That means I've been cleared from every charge. Amen. He justified. And whom he justified them, he also what? Glorified. What shall we say? This man is talking to us today. Huh? What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, I feel like preaching tonight. Who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Who is he that condemneth? Get up off of me. It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession. Somebody said he's praying for me. For us who shall separate us, this gets deeper, huh? from the love of Christ shall tribulation, huh? shall distress for persecution or famine or nakedness or pearl or sword. As it is written, for thy sake, O God, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, nay, in all these things. Well, I want to focus tonight. Somebody say, nay. Come on here. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. Mm -hmm. And what makes us conquerors, we are conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. Oh, this is my testimony. I need to preach that. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, or nor death, nor any other creature shall be able. That's a testimony to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. The words of the great apostle Paul, you may be seated. Amen. The man, amen, that was called on the road to Damascus. Amen. A Pharisee, a Pharisee, a persecutor of the church. Amen. An enemy of God and an enemy of his people. But through an encounter, somebody say, thank God I had an encounter. Because <laughs> we all was God's enemy before we came. Amen. I with God and God met him and he knocked him off his high horse. First he smote him with blindness and knocked him off his high horse. He, he was getting ready to change his perception. That's why he's smelling with blindness. He's getting ready to change the totality of how he saw things and perceived things. He was taking them from a natural realm and an intemporal, intellectual realm to a spiritual realm. He was about to change his eyesight from carnal eyesight to spiritual eyesight. How many of y'all know you need to learn how to see in the spirit? Amen. We're not going to get that because the only way that's going to happen is that your mind has got to be transformed. It's got to be renewed. Come on here. It's got to be changed so you can stop seeing in the old nature and see through the new nature. Paul also was the man that said that we have the mind of Christ mm -hmm, that causes us to perceive things as God perceives him. And so he was converted. Amen. His life was changed. Amen. And he became one of the greatest writers in the Bible. Amen. To me, he is the greatest writer. Nobody's name is mentioned more in the Bible than that of Apostle Paul other than Jesus. Mm -hmm. Paul was the greatest survivor and so are you today that I ever met. I met a whole lot of survivors in the church and I am a survivor. Amen. Uh, come on y'all. Amen. Any other survivors in the house? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a survivor and how Paul was a survivor because the anointing that was on Paul's life did not come easily. People don't understand that because we want to be like great people and we want the anointing that great people have but we don't understand the price that comes with the anointing. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. We all want to be anointed, but nobody wants to pay the price. What's absent in the church is a valid anointing. There is a substitute anointing that people got without paying for it. Mm -hmm. It has no effect. Come on here. That's why you need to know the sounds of the spirit. You need to have the discernment to hear the sound, to know what is God and what is not God and what is real. You're all quiet and what is not real. Am I right about that? Because the anointing has a sound. Mm -hmm. It's something about it. You can hear somebody that's anointed. As soon as they open the mouth, you say, who is that? And somebody just yells, say, it's going to cost me something. Some of you don't even understand why you're going through. I don't know if I'm going to get through this message because you don't understand that as anointed you are, there's a price that's got to be paid. And you're not anointed now as, a, as you're going to be in the future. So we're going from glory to glory. And so we go from one price to another price when we must pay the price. Mm -hmm. Oh, am I right about that? you got to learn. He taught us how to go through. Amen. Somebody say, it's a price. It's a price and it costs to be anointed. Oh, it's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you persecution. And if you don't like persecution, then sit down right now. Come on here because you're not anointed because the anointing is the divine enablement for you to fulfill the assignment that God has you. And the part of your assignment is to be persecuted. Mm -hmm. He's not going to tell you how many things have been done to him, how many persecutions have come. He's only going to show you that I am an overcomer. Come on here. You know what I'm learning? God said, I want you to stand up and who you are. I want you to stand up and stop worrying about what people think about you. The problem with the church is you so worry about people, you can't walk in your anointing. But you got to be bold as a lion. The Bible said the righteous are bold as a lion. You got to get bold. You got to get authoritative. You got to get a don't care attitude. Not about God, but about your adversaries. I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you do to me. I don't care. Oh, y'all ain't going to like me because I didn't came to the place I told my wife, I really don't care. Well, look at somebody say, I really don't care. You, you got to be, you got to be focused. You got to be focused. See, the enemy can only, come on, Moshando, the enemy can only control you as much as you allow him to control you. Amen. People can only control you. They have as much power as you give them over you. So, see, it's a mind game. Come on, say, it's a mind game. That's why when we was in the world, they say, you messing with my mind. Now, the last thing you're going to do is mess with my mind. How do you mess with my mind? Play with my emotions. Mm -mm. You want to get in my emotions. You want to get me angry. You want to get me upset. Come on here. You want me to lose my focus worrying about what you're doing to me. See, if I don't pay you no attention, come on here, then the enemy can't fight by himself. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. So what he does is provoke us and get our attention. Jake did something in the service. A man was sitting on the front row. And Jake said, you know what? He said, look, he's sitting here. He said, nobody knows he's there. But if I begin to focus on him, come on, y'all, then everybody in the church is going to be in the focus. Him. See, you can't get, the Bible said, I'm preaching in here today. He said, don't give no place to the devil. Somebody said, I got to get through it. Uh, or a person who manages to live through the same thing that all, oh, this is us, that often causes death to others. I can hear Mother Oakley preaching and telling us that the saints walk around with stuff going on in their body that other people die from. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. Uh -huh. that's, a, say, that's a survivor. It means to succeed in keeping alive against negative odds. Mm -hmm. Not allowing your situation to overtake you to live after an event that has threatened to take you out. Oh my God, thank you Jesus. I was in my house and God said, did you know something them. That's the, the devil meant for you to be dead. I said, I know he did, but I'm still here. <laughs> Come on here. And he even said that some people thought he was going to die. They would look at you and say, oh, what's wrong with him? Look like he's going to die. That's why I don't hang around negative people. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to hear what nobody said about me negative. Keep it to yourself. Life and death is the power of my tongue. It's not what about you or what about what you say about me. It's what I say about myself. Come on here. The doctor's trying to say something. I told the doctor the devil is a liar. Oh, y'all don't like me. I still went to the doctor, but he said, they ain't going to change. Nothing going to change. No, you ain't got the last say so. Before I went to the doctor, the whole Holy Ghost spoke said, whose report are you going to believe? He said, you shall believe the report of the law. Amen. Somebody said, whose report are you going to believe? <sighs> I'm able to survive. <sighs> 
survived. And when I went back to the doctor, he said, what were you doing? Come on, talking to God and telling God, allowing God to tell me what to do for my body. Now look at your blood work now. He said, oh, the numbers are down. I know they are. I thought they wasn't going to change. Come on here. No, 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 no. You want to change now. You want to change your story. But the Lord said, I am the Lord thy God. And I change if not. Come on here. I don't care how bad the situation is. I'm preaching, man. I don't care how negative it is. He said, I'm not going to change. If I said I'm going to heal you, I'm going to heal you. If I said you're delivered, you're delivered. If I said you're going to live, you're going to live. I don't care what no report say, what nobody said. If I said it, if I spoke it, I'm going to bring it to pass. I'm going to make it good. <laughs> Somebody say you're going to make it good. So you got to learn to live past things. Or through things that often causes death to deceive and, 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 and living and keeping alive against all negative odds to live after an event that has threatened to take you out an overcomer. So I just say, I am an overcomer. Look what it says in John 5 and 4 in the word now. For whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the what? This is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our faith. <laughs> so I'm as victorious as I believe that I am. Huh? But we have overcome the things of this life. How, people of God, by our faith. A definition of a conqueror, one who conquers. Oh, this man of God is a conqueror, a ruler. One who gains a victory over impossible odds. We have to understand, like Paul, amen, that Bishop had not come to success spiritually or naturally without impossible odds. Odds. Mm -hmm. we, know, we see the glory, but we don't know the story. I heard him say about his wife and how she's there and how she bears his burden, and how she comforts him because we have to suffer in, in silence, in private. Y'all getting quiet. Amen. Because we have to come out and be strong for you. How many days this man have come out, amen, overwhelmed with things and not knowing how things are going to turn out. Come out under the pressures of life, but not just the pressures of life, but the pressures of business. Mm -hmm. It takes an anointing, come on here, to bear up under pressure. That's why Paul told Timothy, if you're going to pastor, if you're going to sit over these folk that's older than you and these intellectual people, he said, you better learn how to endure. I'm going to preach it here tonight. Endure hardness like a good soldier. You better tighten up your bootstraps. Come on here and put your gun. Come on here and your utility, artillery on and you better get ready for the battle. And then you better get off the back line and get on the front line. Come on here because if you're a leader, you got to lead from the front. Somebody's from the front. You got to take a whole lot of stuff. Amen. To be the leader. It takes a whole lot of tenacity. It takes a whole lot of strength. Am I right about that? It takes a whole lot of courage to lead God's people. The church will become victorious when peace comes in the church. He's a conqueror. Amen. He's a conqueror. He's one that, that overcame. Mm -hmm. overcomes, amen, who gains the victory over impossible odds, one who subdues and brings things like God told Adam under control and brings into subjection uh -huh, or force or by influence, uh, whatever means, whatever it takes, we have to bring things in subjection. It's going to cause a disturbance, but let me tell you something. God said you got to bring things into subjection, amen, for there to be peace. If you're going to win the battle, mm -hmm, things have to be in order. They got to be in control. Amen. Am I right? The man who defeats his antagonistic come on here, enemy in combat. Amen. The antagonistic enemy is your adversary, the devil. The man that overcomes the enemy, he's the conqueror. The term mentioned in the third verse was more than conqueror. It comes from a Greek word. Mm -hmm. by, by joining two words together, I'm not going to fool with it today. Paul is making a powerful statement concerning every believer. The word more than huh, is derived from that Greek word hyper, which means to be over. He said, You're more than you're over whatever's trying to conquer you. You're above the situation that you're going through or behind it. Amen. And when you say you're over it, you can, it's some things that we just got to get over. Somebody said, I'm over. <laughs> I, I, God said, Clear your mind. Jake said, The devil, come on here, wants to uh, uh, take a power and authority over you and your life by messing your mind by keeping you in emotional turmoil, keeping you upset mm -hmm, and so stressed out that
that you can even enjoy the things that God has given you. It's one, it's a sad thing when God has blessed you and then you can't be content in your blessing. Amen. You're so disturbed over what's going on around you. It implies superiority, something that causes us to be way beyond measure above our enemy. It signifies, Lord, this is good. It signifies something that is paramount, foremost, first rate. Somebody say, I'm first rate. Mm -hmm. I'm not subordinate to anything or anybody. Now, I'm not talking about leadership. I'm talking about the things of life. I'm not subordinate to my situation, subordinate to my finance. Amen. I'm above it. I'm above it. I'm over it. Oh, come on here. I'm first class. Mm -hmm. I'm greater. I'm higher. I'm better than. I'm superior to. I'm preeminent. I'm dominant. I'm in control. I'm more than a match for my enemies. Somebody say, I'm built for this. Jesus, amen, told his disciple in Luke 10 and 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing come on here shall by any means hurt you. So through this uh, <laughs> definition of hyper is depicted in scripture. We all as believers have numerous power over the devil putting us above over beyond our enemies. That's what Paul is saying. I am above the test. I'm over the trial. I'm beyond the afflictions. I'm going through it. I'm coming through over it. I'm a survivor because I'm greater. Come on here than what I'm going through. I'm a survivor because I'm greater than what I've been through. I am more powerful than my situation. Oh yes, I'm above it. Somebody say I'm above it. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2, 1 and 6 said and you have he quickened. Let's go through the word. Who were dead in trespasses and sins where in times past you walk according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now what work in the children of disobedience among whom also you had your conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and we're by nature are y'all with me like wrath the children of God even as others but God who is rich in mercy somebody say thank God for mercy mm -hmm. for his great love wherein he had loved us even when we were dead in sins have what quickened somebody say I've been quickened I've been raised from the dead us together but this is the key uh -huh together with Christ by grace you are saved and have raised us up together and made us to sit somebody say I'm over it I'm above it he made us to sit together where in heavenly places in Christ Jesus I want y'all to talk to me tonight somebody say I'm sitting on top of it mm -hmm. you're not supposed to be in it you're supposed to be sitting on top of it you're supposed to be walking on top of it it's not supposed to be on top of you you're supposed to be on top of it that's why the Bible said he that dwell in the secret place of the most high shall abide where under the shadow of the almighty I can't go through that I wish I could he said I'm telling you that there's power cause he gonna cover you with his wings he gonna keep you come on here under his feathers he's gonna give his angels charge over you come on here you will never be defeated because the angels are in charge man the angels I was sitting I forget the number now the angels went to war in the old testament and threw thousands of men at one time it wasn't even angels it was one angel that killed over a thousand men. Don't you know that not only is God fighting for you, the Holy Ghost is fighting for you, but there's angels. Goodness and mercy is fighting your battle. Why are you upset? Why are you trying to wear yourself out? Trying to win the battle? It's already done. I'm sitting on top of it. That Psalm 91 is a place in the spirit that takes me above what I'm going through. I, that's why I'm separating myself and staying in the house. I got to get above all this crazy stuff that's going on around me because I'm all in it. And when I'm all in it, I can't win it. I'm preaching in here today. I'm, I'm talking to myself, honey. Amen. And I'm in it. I can't win it. Come on here. I need to stay home. I need to get myself together because I got to leave folk that don't want to be led. But the devil is a liar because God will give me a special anointing. Amen. Even for the sheep that don't want to be led. Y'all don't hear me. Talk about, uh, look at somebody say you need a special anointing huh? sitting that was the place in the spirit where we sit above amen the enemy the test and the trial there is a place I can see a current clock shears on my basement there is a place a secret place where I could go I keep pushing the replay button there is a place I'm, I'm, a I'm trying to help these folk because honey they're not living
living in the spirit. Come on, they're living in the flesh. Come on, and the church is too up. Church folk are defeated. They're not conquerors. They're defeated. They can't win no battles. They can't fight for nobody else. They can't even fight for themselves. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I had to get up. I'm going to deliver a pound, and I can't fight for myself. I'm crying. They don't like me. I'm crying. They don't do nothing I say. I'm crying. God said, leave them. Come on here and keep going because whatever you lose, I'm going to make the difference up. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You're looking at the same thing. Get on top of it. Somebody say, get on top of it. Whatever it is, I can get on top of it. I got to shout. I'm going to get on top of what the devil is doing. Mm -hmm. I'm on top of it with Christ. I am a survivor. I'm more than a conqueror. The second part of the verse is this word, more than conqueror. It comes from the Greek word, amen, nakao, which is defined as an overcomer, a conqueror, a champion. Somebody say, I'm a champion. Mm -hmm. Ah, Bishop, that's what I see you today. I'm going to preach in a minute. Amen. You're a champion. Amen. You're a hero. You're an example. You're somebody we can look to. Amen. People are tired of looking at failures. Come on, y'all. Losers. Oh, y'all going to get mad at me. I know I ain't got no losers in the house. Yes, you always losing. Ain't got no testimony. Come on here. I don't know. The devil did this. The devil did that. I said, the devil with the devil. Amen. 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 I'm tired of the devil. I'm tired of what he's trying to do to me. I recognize that I have to know that I am somebody. Come on here. The devil will devour you. He will use people to devour you. He'll strip you of your identity. He'll strip you of your position. Whenever you get out of position, you've lost your power because in position is name. Come on here. In position is authority. In position is power. Come on here. And if you move out of position you're gonna lose your name come on here you're gonna lose your power you're gonna lose your authority and the devil has a right to walk over top of you but you got to wake up i can hear him saying in isaiah awake awake old zion he said put on your strength get on up get on up from a place of lassitude get on a place of defeat get on up he said put on your beautiful garments come on start praising god again god, let the devil shut your mouth in the church got you sitting up here like you bound the the devil is a liar. The devil can't stop you from praising God. He's messing with your mind. He's messing with your emotions. He's trying to make you think that he has power over you. That you can't praise God because you're going through. But I come to tell you tonight, you better praise God. Anybody can praise him on the mountain. Anybody can praise him in the sunshine. But can you praise him? But can you praise him in the valley? Can you praise him? Come out here in the storm. Can you praise him when you're broke and busted? Can you praise him when your body's wrapped with pain? Can you praise him when there's trouble in your house? Look at somebody say, you better praise him. Overcomer. Champions. Know how to praise God. Told us as an overcomer and a survivor said, in whatever state you in, that you find yourself in, he's defined as an overcomer, a conqueror, a champion, a victor, a master. Oh my shy. God had to let me know. Don't you know I'm on your side? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My shy. Why? How the song said, Why should I be discouraged? Amen. Why should I let the shadows fall? Why should my heart be lonely and long for a heavenly home when Jesus is my portion? My constant friend is he. His eyes. I feel like preaching tonight. I'm sorry. It's on the sparrow. Come on here. And he watches over me. I know God. Somebody say, you got to know God is on your side. Um, he that spared not his own son, but to live him up for all things. How can he not give us all things? Somebody say, he's going to give us all things through him freely. Who can come against us? Who can judge us? It's God that clears us, that makes us worthy. Who can condemn us? Uh, oh, verse 37 declares, we are always winners. Somebody say we always win. <laughs> oh, I'm about to get happy. I told the devil I always win. Oh, my child, I always come out all right. God always shows up. <laughs> uh, he always turns my situation around. He may not come when I want him, but I declare to you, he gets there on time. He always shows up. <laughs> he always brings me out. He speaks a word of peace in the midst of my storm. Are y'all me. 
he always tells me when I was down flat on my back uh, he said this is not the end uh, he said I'm going to heal you in fact you're already healed uh, oh y'all don't hear me he said don't you listen to anything that the doctors say you be obedient and take care of your body but don't accept anything negative because you got to believe my word uh, you got to trust me now uh oh if you're going to win you got to trust me now I'm prophesying right now. If you're going to be a conqueror, you got to trust me now. You got to take your trust out of the things around you. You got to take the trust out of the people. Because if you're going to win, you're going to win because of the conqueror that lives inside of you. And the confidence that you have in him. Uh, ability to be conquerors is in Christ. And therefore, nothing will separate us. Nothing will be able, amen, to separate us from the love of God. That's in Christ Jesus. I'm not lucky. Come on here. Yeah. You hear me, son? I'm not lucky. I am so glad I am loved. Mm -hmm. Say it, somebody. Say, I'm not lucky. Somebody say, you know, you are lucky something because you came out there. No, I'm not lucky. I'm loved. I'm loved by God. How about he brings me out because he loves me? Not because I'm perfect. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me. Not because I've done everything that I should, but I am loved.